do you know what can i just ask everyone to just say in the chat if they've um not used fruit loops before yes yeah. so i know if the if it's kind of yeah. more advanced people or if it's beginners just so i can tailor what i'm saying yeah nice one all right so we've just gone live on the socials um so welcome everyone to the explicit's uh, recharge fl studio session um so you guys are putting in the chat whether you've used it or not which is good um so yeah over to you dex man yeah okay cool perfect so yeah most people haven't used fruit this before it seems so let's go i was thinking i was going to open songs for you guys and just um you know explain you know why did i do this why did i do that but you know if we're using if, if you guys haven't used fruit loops a lot of that is not going to make any sense so I figured it's probably best if I just start a song and we just make a song and um, I could just explain to you, you know, everything that I'm doing and explain the program while I'm doing it. So, um, yeah, let's, let's kick it off. So this is the pattern, that's the kind of pattern, what do they call it? They call it the channel rack. It's just the sequence, really. This is where you put in all your beats and stuff. So. This is the browser on this side. This is where we're going to get the sounds from. So there's sounds in two ways. Here are the samples. So your kicks, any like samples, claps, snares, etc. This side is where all the plugins are. But um, it splits it up. So you've got effects. Effects in, in Fruity Loops. Effects are things like reverb and delays, these kind of things, compressors all that kind of stuff, processing. And then you've got generators. The generators are the ones that give you sounds, like the contact player, uh, you know, all the sounds and VSTs that we like to get simps and stuff from. So, um, you know, let's kick it off. So I'm just gonna look for a couple of bits. I'll find, I'll find a kick that I like. That kick, sorry, let's drag that out. So I'm gonna start with this kick. The tempo's up here. Um, I'll go 140 for now. Um, just so you know what's going on here. These kind of are quick ways to get to everything you need, really. Um, mixer, the channel rack. This is where we play melodies in. Um, but if you've got a keyboard, you probably won't want to use this. You, you might be a player, but my rhythm is a mess, so I still click in everything now. Um, and this is like, you know, you'll be familiar with this if you use other doors like Logic and stuff. So that's what this is about. You can, once you've got your, um, say I put some kicks in here. Sorry, let's put it back on pattern mode. So you've got pattern mode and song mode. In pattern mode, it's just going to loop whatever in, in this section here. And in song mode, once you've put in your patterns, you can click them in here. Um, and arrange your song, you know, put them in order and stuff. So I'm gonna start off with a kick. Um, also, if you notice when I click here, because it just gives me four four beats straight away. Um, gives me four beats each. It's color coded, by the way. So you got blue, red, blue, red. It's just one beat each time. So if we was doing making house, just that's the kick drum for house. Yeah, so so you know you just kind of vibe with it, vibe with it. What works for you? Yeah. Um. So there, there's a little kick pattern. I'm gonna get a snare. That will do. Drag out a snare. Also, when you drag things out, you can choose to replace something or you can put it underneath and look for the green bar. You can put it in between. It's all about where that green bar drops. That's that's where the sound's gonna land. Um, you know what is well, I kind of want to get across how easy Fruity Loops is to pick up. Um, it's, it is really easy to pick up. There's got a lot of advanced um, techniques and stuff that you can do later down, but it's, it's just an easy program to pick up, yeah? Nice. 
disgusting. Yeah, so let's get a few hats. That how would do. Cat hat. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do a few a couple of hat patterns. NK said it's a bit like reason. Do you know what's funny? Reason. Do you know what's again? If anyone wants to ask questions, just throw it in the chat. Um, reason's interesting because when I first I opened Reason when I was a teenager, a long time ago, and um, I saw the patch bay, and I was like, no way, this stuff. I think I pulled one out and put it back. But at that time in my life, I didn't know what a patch bay was. So it was a bit mad. I remember being a teenager, open reason, and I just closed it back. But I think it is similar to this. But all of the doors have this aspect now. Studio One, I'm sure Logic's got it now. Um, Fruit Loops has got plugins that can do it. I mean, not Fruit Loops, Cubase has got plugins that can, that can do this. It's just, you know, this is the bread and butter of Fruit Loops. It's just how it works it's, it's kind of the the, the essence of fruit so um yeah so we're gonna throw some hats in let's get a, let's get an open hat yeah let's throw something in oh what's going on I've lost my page. So if you notice, this just keeps playing. Uh, when you notice this red thing on like this, you might have the loop points on. So all it's doing is going to keep looping this section here. It's going to keep looping this section here. So forget about that. Just click this and it will take that off. So it'll just play once. What's going on? Do you know what? Hold on. I'm going to shut down my internet because I keep getting pop ups. Right. Back to free. Here we are. So, yeah, so. Um, If you notice, this snare is delayed. There's something, you know, when I look at the sound, if you click in any of these, um, it gives you options for the actual sound that you're working with. I can see there's a gap in here. I want to get rid of that gap because it kind of works, but the gap's too big. So what I'm going to do, there's there's a few ways I can sort this. This is the beauty of Fruit Loops. There's so many ways to do things. Literally, I can just turn this to say, look, make the sample start from there. Is there a reason why there be that gap or is that just on the side? Yeah, all it is is the person who made this pack or whoever sampled this sound, they've um they've just cut it late. They've 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 put that gap in there. They might have done it to give you a swing, but you know, we can give ourselves our own swing. So that's one thing you can do. You can you can stop there. And if you did want to give it a swing, um if you click this spanner symbol here, we've got this shift. And this shift will move it along. Yeah, so I'll, I'll exaggerate it so you can see what it does. Yeah, that's exaggerated. But this just gives it a little swing, you know? So you, could, you can give it your own swing, your own character. Yeah, and this is the thing. We're making computer music. When you're making computer music, often, unless you're playing things in with your own human swing, and if you're doing it the way I do it, I often have to go in and kick things off a little bit to give it the swing, or it will just be a bit too static and rigid, you know? And yeah, that's that's kind of one of the, the things we have to pay attention to in computer generated music. So, um, so while we're doing here, by the way, left side, we've got all these pans, right? These are pans, the left ones. These will pan it to the left, pan it to the right. Um, these are just volume. 
And these here are these numbers are you assigning things to a mixer channel? So there is a quick way to assign everything. And these these three I'm not using, so I'm gonna get rid of them. Let's delete those. So there is a quick way. If I can remember it, yeah, assign selected to free mixer tracks. But in order to do that, I'd have to double click here, so it highlights all of them, and then do it, and it will assign them. So I'm going to do that, assign selected. So they, it's put them on the mixer now, um, and it names them for you as well, which is handy. So you can see them all floating around on the mixer. Uh, it's got another more prettier setting, if you like, where it shows you the waveforms of everything. I always forget that's there actually. So um so what we got we got we got open up, we got a cap. Yeah, so we got some drums basically. Another thing to do, you can change this manually by the way. So if I don't want that kick on number one or I don't want it assigned, I can just grab it and just change the number to whichever number. You can do that for all the tracks. Um Oh, yep, yep, yep. Another thing as well, when it comes to arranging this, when it comes to arranging this, there's another setting that can split this all up for you because it's easier to, you know, if I put this on the arrangement page right now, it's just one, you say everything in here. But what if I want to split things up so I can, you know, arrange a song and have an intro? you know, chorus, bridge, all, all the rest of it. So what I'm going to do, again, I could manually cut and paste each one, cut and paste it onto a new channel. But, you know, no one's got time for that. This one thing, in my opinion, is, you know, music's all about workflow. It's about finding your workflow and working out the best way you can move quickly and not have to think about so much things. You should only be trying to think about, you know, the experimentation that you're doing or the formula you're doing, if it's a formula or just trying stuff. So uh, we don't really want to think about some of these program mechanics so much. So we use shortcuts. Um, so there's a way for this patterns is in, um, where are we? Split by channel. So what that does for me, it gives me everything on a separate pattern. All these are just these. That's the kick one. This is the snare one. This is the hat. If you notice this one, I dropped it on the thing, on the um, channel and it named it. It renamed the channel. But I don't usually do that because sometimes I put, you can, it's not like some other doors. You can put anything on any channel, anywhere. You could put it halfway. You can, you can do lots of stuff. So I try not to move too rigid on this. In fact, in fact leave it. okay, cool. So if we're going to arrange this now, You can select it all. And what's that? Control and B. It's just copy and paste. Though. That's what it is. Copy and paste. Um, or duplicate if you like. And then you can kind of switch things up. So right click things to move things away, to take things away. Hold on. I'm still playing. Okay. Oh, here we go. Look what it's done. Okay, cool. So, if you notice, I'm deleting things up here. And there's another thing behind it. I don't even know when that happened, but... There's loads of things. There's layers and layers and layers. I'm going to take all those layers out. Don't know why I've done that. Yeah, I'm just going to add these back. 
it's it's kind of gray, opaque and grayed out because the channel's muted. So I'm unmuting the channel. So here we go. So this is how it was supposed to be. Yeah. So there we go. Okay. So let's get some um. Let's get some sounds. Let's get some sounds now. So I'm just going to go to the other side. Remember, the samples are on this side. And we click this button here. We get the plugins. I'm going to use the contact player. There's not much in the contact player on this computer because I don't really make tunes on this computer. I make tunes on my laptop. But, um, oh, it's a question. Sorry. Oh, someone clock. Big up Smiley. The top pattern has all the patterns. Yes. Okay, so Smiley just said, when you split the patterns, it does that automatically for some reason. I've not noticed that. Maybe I don't do that option a lot, but yeah, that's what happened. Um, so this is my contact player. This is just a plugin, one plugin. There's, 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 this is a different type of plugin. Do I normally always start with drums or melody sometimes? I used to religiously start with drums, religiously, every time. But I stopped. I, I start with melodies now, just because the music that I make nowadays is more melody driven. So I often do the melodies first and then do the drums. So um, yeah, I just, just work a bit different now. Um, I think it's because the drums used to get me more excited. And now nowadays the melodies get me more excited. Anyway. Contact's different because contact has these things, these these players, right? these um libraries, sorry. So we call these libraries. And um, there are companies making libraries. There are people making libraries. Um, there's loads of libraries. It's, it's kind of like if everyone remembers Massive, you know, when Massive came around, there was just so many different people making sounds for Massive. That's what's happening here. But in my opinion, if you're looking for real sounds, as in not, as in real sounds, as in a real violin or a real piano, and they've sampled every single key on the piano, so it's like you're playing the real piano. You know what I mean? They, this is great for it. It's great. There's loads of libraries for it, especially for orchestral stuff. You know, voices, choirs. There's a choir on here as well. Um, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of options. Dan says, I find if you build the melodies first, you can mold your drums to the rhythm and build them around it. Yeah, it's, it's the same. It works both ways. It, it definitely works both ways. So, um, okay, let's go. Do you know what? I actually have another. Some of the contact libraries, if you make a contact library, you can send it to native instruments and they turn your con, they do some magic thing and allow it to be put in as a bank, like how you're seeing these in the Fruit Loops, right? But a lot of companies, they haven't done it that official way. So you just have to drag the sounds in. So I'm gonna do that now. Am I, is it gonna let me? I hope so. gonna let me there we go drag that in so that's loading up now this computer is not the fastest so it might take a little while but it will get there so this is lakeside pipe organ it's just another library um, it's got pipe or, as in this is the thing with contact they've got sounds upon sounds upon sound whatever you want you want uh, elf singing They've got one. You want pipe organs, they've got it. They've got it all. So we've got this now. Um let's 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 give it a listen. Cool, that's the sound of it. So I'm gonna bang in a little melody. And before I do this, I'm gonna press plus here. When you press plus, because you can just grab here and you can go to a new pattern. 
I'm going to press plus. It's going to go to, it's going to just find the next free pattern automatically for me. So as I said, we don't want to be doing, well, I don't want to be doing all these little program mechanics. I ain't got time for that. Just want to stay in the zone. I don't know if you guys understand what flow state is. You want to stay in your flow state. So, so this is why a lot of, um, would you say native instruments would be the best for live sounds? In my opinion, yes. Yes. Because it's not one company making all the sounds. They've got loads of companies. It's just third party software for it. It's crazy. Libraries upon libraries. So um, I've got a new, new pattern here. I'm going to throw this in. So if I double click and drag, it's going to loop this part. Everything in red now is going to be brown. So this will give me a bit of leeway. So you know what? Let's make this a bit jumpier. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I just got to find type in a little melody now. As I said, this is the way I do it. Some of you guys might prefer to play things in. If you do want to play things in, just hit the record button. This stuff comes up. You can choose exactly what you want to do. Um, I always choose everything or I just press X and then it won't oh, another thing. This three, two, one will give you accounting. If that's highlighted, it will do three two, one, and then launch. I'll show you. Yeah. If it's not highlighted, it starts straight away. It starts when you press play. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. If you're going to play things in, I'm not going to play things in, so I don't need to worry about this. So I'm just going to find a piano roll. So this is where you can play melodies. You can do it from the other side as well but it can be a bit cumbersome. It's much better to do it from here, I think. So. So, you know, we, we all got, we all got different vibes. If you notice, when I'm pressing these notes, I can drag them and it's not locking to the grid. It's not locking to the grid. Um, that's because right now it's set onto none, as in no, no grids. I'm going to put it on line so it locks things to the line, whichever the nearest line is. Yeah. So. go into any tracks later on can you do hypernova i wish i could do hypernova but I, I don't have it on this computer unfortunately take the last one off just I've, I've taken the last one off to try and give it an effect like it whips back round again so i've done that i've made it a bit different and to try and loop it back around and let's see if that works yeah okay cool i like that so i've got that pattern now i could just pick by the way notice i'm using a paint um a paintbrush paint brushes allow you to do this and just hold it and drag it across. Um, if I'm using the pencil, it works a bit different. It doesn't let you do that. So it just works a bit different. So you, you know, you'll find whichever one works best for you. Yeah, and you know what? I'm gonna just show you guys something that I, I, I like doing a lot. Um, So I've just extended them so I can show this to you. In Fruit Loops, all these sounds and instruments and stuff, Fruit Loops, 
you can manipulate things from in here. So you've got attack, release, um, attack, release, swell. Swell is just how much it emphasizes. All these plugins, some of them have slightly different um, parameters to change, but they're pretty much all similar. So, you, you know, you can just learn what attack is. Attack is just how hard the sound starts. Um, with a fast attack, the sound hits hard straight away. It just comes in, bam. If you slow it down, the sounds, as you can hear, they're taking longer to start. Yeah. Um, offset, I think that's just gonna push it. I would think offset kind of moves the sound along. But because everything's so close to each other, they're probably knocking into each other and we can't really hear what's going on. Release is the end of the sound. So whereas attack is the beginning, release is the end. Um, the thing is, because this sound is filling up so much, I'd need to use a shorter sound to demo what the release is doing. I can do that. I will do that on another sound. So um, for now, I'll just leave that as is. Yeah, so basically that's manipulation within the plugin. Now, Fruit Loops, if you click here and then you click here, Fruit Loops can manipulate all these sounds itself. So it's got its own system of manipulating sounds. And I like to use this appreciator down here. So, you know, these buttons just say which direction, just in case you don't know, appreciator is just like when you take chords and you play them, not at the same time, you play them like, um, one after the other. So one note, one note, one note, one note, and you can make it go back. If it's going up, it's just going up, and then it starts again up. If it's going the other way down, it does it the other way. Then you've got these ones, these little weird ones that kind of, they go down and then they come back up. So that's what they're doing. Take a chord and you're playing it this way or this way, or you're playing it so it bounces back on each other. That's, that's what it is. Um, so, Let's um. No, it's, just, it's just giving it more flavor straight away. I ain't even done nothing. And you can just flip through these, and you can kind of hear which is the flavor that you like. And then you got this time. This time is how fast it's gonna flip through the sounds. Ooh, computer's not holding it. And then range, range is. When it plays it once, range, if I've got two range, if I put that to two, once it's finished that, it, once it's finished the chord, it will go to the next octave and it will play the chord again. Yeah, and you can push that up. I think it goes up to four, but it might even be further than that. And repeat just makes it play things first. Yeah, these are all just little vibey things that I find, you know, the way I make music, I like to try things. I try not to work with formulas unless I've found something, this mad formula that I like and it works. But um, part of the fun for me is the experimentation and just trying stuff. And, you know, you never know, you, you do something that's a bit different from what everyone else is doing. If your thing pops, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing, isn't it? Different, different, different. Because you've changed, you've changed the game now. You've changed something in the game anyway. Because no one was doing that. Now you did it. It works. So anyway, we got this. And you know, you can mess with this. It shortens the notes. And then if you you can go back into this and you can try different sizes like that also just so you know um i can change this i can change this um sound so i could take another sound and open it up and it would keep the same settings on this it would just change the sound but the Fruit Loop settings that I did with the Arpeggio or anything else I do here, 
it will um, still keep that. You can also shift it as well. You know, if you've shifted the drums a lot and you want to put some swing, you can do this to anything, any sound. So it's all good. It's all good. Um, so let's try and get a bass. On this computer, I don't really have anything, any plugins that can give me some dirty basses that I could show you guys. But um, you know, you so you know you can get some sick plugins from sick basses from plugins. Um, especially synth, mad synth basses. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use a sample. When I say a sample, I mean not a, a sample of someone playing a bass line. I'm just gonna get a bass sound as a sample. So, you know, you got all these scientists that put out packs and packs and packs of sounds, of, of kind of sounds that they've made. And you know what I find often the producers don't aren't often able to make sounds as good as the guys that make sounds for a living. So these guys, you know, these lot are scientists, so let them work. So I'm just gonna find a that's alright. I can just, I'm not using my speakers, I'm playing this through the iMac screen. So I can just about hear that. Hopefully you guys can. Um, if you notice, this sound is a bit low. It's a it's a sub bass anyway. So, you know, low can work because it's still going to be audible. But, you know, if you open a sound and you see, right, this is a bit small. Why is the, the wave file so small? Press normalize and it will just buff. It will make it bigger. Yeah, and you've got some other controls in here. Um, this is not probably the best sound to show these things on, but you can reverse the sound. Um, and these things, you probably won't need to worry about these for now, but you can, you know, for instance, if you're laying layering kicks nowadays, a lot of these kicks in the packs are thick and buff already, but back in the day, you know, when we was all scavenging for sounds, yeah, some of these kicks we used to find were weak, so we had to layer them up. So once we're layering them up, sometimes you'll put one kick on top of another kick and they phase. And when these two kicks phase, they, um, it, it kind of removes some of the frequencies in the sound. So you lose some of the power of the sound. Um, so that's why we use the reverse polarity. And that can change the phase of the sound. So it kind of, the samples, they kind of, it, they, they kind of move out the way. So two things can play at the same time and not cancel each other out. Phasing is a whole other thing. You don't need to worry about that. That's really, whoever's mixing the tune, really, they, they should be worrying about that. But um, so reverse pol polarity, that's when you do that. Maybe when you're layering things. It's typically used with um, live drums and live instruments where, you know, one microphone or two mics are picking up um, live things. But, you know, live things are throughout the whole room. So you might be recording it on this mic, but this mic picks it up as well. And then when you put those mics together in the program, some of the frequencies get cancelled out. That, that's, that's all that is. Um, so where were we? Bass. Um, so I'm going to throw this bass in now. It's kind of hard to hear it through the IMAX screen, but we move. So notice, look how short that is, right? I've put in a little thing and it's just hanging on forever. I don't want to hang on that long, but it's still going on now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into the sound, sound options. Um, so there's a few ways we can do this. Now, one way we can just go here and say, cut itself. If you say cut itself, what it's going to do is when it comes to the next sound, the next note that it triggers is going to stop the last one. Yeah, so I'll change the notes so you can hear what happens. Hold on. No. 
No. Did not cut it. Okay, I didn't press the button. So I'm going to press it now. Bam. Cut it. So before, just now, you heard them still playing at the same time. Yeah. Mess. Cut it so. Yeah, so it stops the note by itself. But you can have even more control of it. Um, there's other ways. Some people might do it this way, where you just literally use the in and out. And you can shape it that way. It's not very precise, though. It's not very precise doing it this way. Um, probably the best way is to use this. Turn on the envelope. And remember what we were talking about earlier on, the attack. You can just set it, and you can make the sound as, the sound as short as you like. Do you know what? Can you guys even hear this sub? I'm not sure if... Just, just give me a... Near it slightly. You can hear it, yeah? Yeah, okay. slightly, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what then, what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, they can hear it. Okay, nice. Um, it's not very clear on this system. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign it to a channel quickly, channel 10. And all I'm going to do, because sometimes, you know, some of these sub bases, they don't have a lot of up. We can increase the upper harmonics of the sound to make it cut through like this iMac speaker that i'm listening to it from so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna find a distort uh saturator or a distortion unit somewhere which one could i use destructor that would do there you go so now i can hear that more clearly because that's that's uh let me give you an example of what that's doing uh fab filter let's get an eq quickly I can find one. There you go. Yes. If you look at these, can I freeze it? Yes. Okay. So I've just frozen this, right? Just so we can see what's going on. So these things are harmonics of the sound, right? Now, all I've done now by putting the saturation on is made these upper harmonics come up a bit. And this is what cuts through the, um, this is what cuts through on like laptop speakers and phone speakers and stuff that they ain't got no bass. Your phone hasn't got no real bass like a club or monitor speakers or hi-fi speakers. So, but nowadays most people are listening through these kind of things. So. It's kind of one thing we should pay attention to. And you can come in here and raise things yourself, but it works. It's doing it in a slightly different way. So I tend to use saturation uh, plugins. This is built into Fruit Loops. Um, and you can, you can tweak it from here too. Yeah, so there's, it's endless. The possibilities are endless. So find a saturator, make it cut through more. I'm going to leave that on. Okay, so where were we? Okay. Okay, so another thing, um, something you hear the drill, the drill producers doing a lot nowadays, um, slides, bass slides. Again, there's there's a few ways to do this, but this is one way. So if I click here, and then I press on anywhere on here, see it's got this little tick. That means this note is a slide note. It's not the same as this. It's, that's a note. This is just a sliding note. It's going to slide to wherever I put this on. Now, increasing this or decreasing it determines how long it's going to take to slide and how, you know, if it's going to be quick. This is a quick slide. This is a slow slide. So it will slow to the, slow, slowly go to the note. And these down here, these down here are, um, you know, it gives you an extra set of controls. 
So velocity is just volume. Volume. Simply. You got cutoff frequencies, you can change pitches. I find these are really good with hats. You see when you're doing hats like trap hats and stuff, you're doing trills to keep those little feel those I'll show you something here. But to keep them interesting, you can mess around with things like this and and I'll show you. I'll come back to that. And also you got copy. I'm gonna clone this channel. So there's stuff I wanna do, but I don't wanna do it on this channel that I just done. Um, so I'm just opening up on Basically the last one I touched, that's the way this uh, Fruit Loops works. The last one I touched was a sliding note. So even though I've opened the new channel, when I press click, it's giving me a sliding note still. So to get rid of it, I just click that again, turns it off. And this is this is the fun part really you just you can just um try stuff try stuff what i'm gonna do Yeah, so this is it really. You just vibe, vibe with it. That's what this is about. You know, there's two different types of producers and both are okay. Some use formulas, you know, work with what they know, you know, stuff that you like already. You just make it, learn the formula, absorb it, and you can um, just pattern things out like that. The other way, these guys that just try stuff, um, you know, Everyone's here for different reasons, man. Okay, we live there. You know what, another little trick, back to the plugins again, effects. I'm gonna throw this sound up to number 11. So it's on track 11 at the moment. It's not labeled. I can right click and label it, rename, and if I want to, I'm not gonna do that. Little trick, someone showed me the other day actually, big up Nate, um, sketch cassette. Decent plugin, you know, this is not a Fruit Loops plugin, but it's not an expensive plugin either. I think it's like, I think it's like 15 pounds or something. So, so what this does, you know, sometimes you hear that kind of wishy-washy sound that, that makes it sound like an old broken tape player or something. This, this can give you that sound. And there's loads of plugins like this that will manipulate your sound in ways and, you know, Yeah, so this is it. This is the fun. This is the beauty of what we do, man. I with it. Yeah, it's just made it a bit wonky. I like that, that, that kind of style. Yeah, so um, that's where we're at so far. So these are on the same channel. I'm just gonna take the bass notes off. In fact, I'll take this one off because there's only one. Cut that. I'm gonna press add to go to a new channel. 
and assign it there. So now we can just quickly give it an arrangement. Um, And you know what? There's another little trick that I think will work nice on this. Um, this position, DSP STN, how he spells his name. He threw up a trick to me the other day. Sick. He used this one, Effectrix. Effectrix is dope. You've got all these little, um, again, this is an in Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops has something similar, actually. It's called Glitch. Is it called Glitch something? It's really, it's got growth speed. Growth speed is similar to this. Um, but yeah, he showed me this on, on here. And all these are different little effects that you can put on your, whatever you want to put it on really, to give it some more vibes. So we like this. He showed me this little trick here. That's a vibe. And then you've got, um, do little things here and there. Yeah, so extra little vibes coming from this Effectrix. Um, again, I don't think it's Effectrix is an expensive thing either, to be fair. On this computer, my engineer kind of buys all this stuff. I don't use this computer that much. So, um, Where are we? Where are we? Let's bring the beats back. Let's bring the beats back. Okay. Basically, what you need to do with Effectrix on this thing here, is you need to export the sound so you can realign it. It's just a bit of a headache. But when you do it, it sounds really good still. Have I got time for it now? Probably not. So let's not worry. But I've, I've showed you, it's good. You should try that one out still. So have I turned it off? I'm gonna turn Effectrix off. I'll show you Gross Beat, because Gross Beat's in the program already. So you can mess with that straight away. So um, again, you can flick through all these presets and they got loads of different ones as well. They got different banks. Yeah, so you've got these different banks, and they'll give you another set of different options. Yeah, and you can you can you can make your own ones. Yeah, so have fun with this. Loads of things, endless poss possibilities again. Yeah, I won't go too much into that, but it, it's a nice little thing to know. RC20 is another gem for that. Yeah, yeah, big up Dan. RC20 is another banger for the um for these kind of effects. RC20 is really good for that cassette player feel and kind of stuff. What is that called? Um. The last plugin after the fetch. That's called Gross Beat. And Gross Beat is part of Free Loops. And yeah, there's a you can do so much stuff with it. Um I, I haven't I haven't gone into it at all, really. There's there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. So um yeah, that's gross beat anyway. Um so, so yeah, let's give this a quick arrangement. Quick arrangement, let's turn it into an actual song, not just a little pattern that we made. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with this. Gross, gross, gross. Is it gross or gross beat? Nah, it's gross. Gross. G-R-O-S-S. -S. Yeah, so I like that intro. I mean the intro, I'm gonna have to do some other stuff because in myself, I get bored of that by about here, halfway. So something else is going to have to happen. But we can... We can drop the tree by here. 
And you know, once you're at any part, feel free, you know, if, if, if someone's not clicking with you, change it up. I do that all the time. You know, you don't need to commit to anything. Just this snare now. This snare is not working for me anymore. I would change that. I mean, I'm not actually making a song now. I'm doing this this kind of class vibe, but at this point, I would change that. I wouldn't be feeling that. Possibly, I could clone it and and add another sound. Like you can layer sounds as well. Don't forget that you can layer. Them. Whoa! What is this experience? Yeah, look how quiet that is. That is a joke. I'm gonna normalize that. There you go. We coming back. And the second one is well. So what is this pack that I'm drawing from? It's just got very low sound, but. They're helpful as well for a reason. You know, some people like the sounds low because they can process them more. And some packs come processed already and everything's looking like this and mad loud. And you can't process that at all. You can't add anything. You can't buff it up in any way. So, you know, some people like processed packs. Some people like unprocessed packs. So pay attention to which one. When you buy a pack, pay attention to that. Um, I don't like this second one. Like you can blend them in as well. So I could just turn one of them down. Um, so let's, I'm going to use this brush tool and I'm just going to. Yeah, we've got these hats here. Hats. Bit rigid. Bit rigid. You know, nowadays. What are we doing nowadays? Let's have a look. Uh, We got a quick. Oh, we got. Let's get some. Let's change these hats. These hats are not. They're not doing it for me. They're not rocking. Um. But we ain't got time to be. All right. Cool. Just gonna switch these out. This is a sample pack that I was building, funny enough. So we just use this. Just use this. Boom. Let's do the typical, this is what everyone's doing nowadays. So again, this is me doing formulas now. This is me listening to what's going on out there and saying, okay, cool. Whoa, we've got the loop points on. Don't forget about the loop points. Sometimes you play things and they just keep Loop points. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to, um, I'm going to copy this from this. I'm just going to do kind of piano roll with it. Remember this one, this is the volume. I won't go into too much of this, but you can see the gist. See, with hats, hats are mad important. Like in every genre, that works in a club, hats are probably the most issue. The hats are what you're dancing to. You're not dancing to the kick or the snares. You're dancing, your head's nodding and stuff. You're moving to the kick and the snares. But the groove in all these things are coming from the hats. So whether it's house music, grime music, drill music, it doesn't matter, dubstep, whatever. Hats, you know, dance hall, hats. It's all the hats. So um, hats you can build in layers. So you've got that, the, you, this could be layer on layer on layer. I mean, 
when I do collabs with like this position, he's got layers like seven, eight layers of hats, loads of stuff going on. And then some people might just do a simple, you know, like what's his name? Dre. Dre uses sometimes one hat and that's it. So it's just how you get the groove. However you get the groove is how you get the groove. Yeah, so um cool. My point is don't feel that you have to commit to anything. Change it as much as you like. It's art. That's alright, I'll leave that there. Yes, okay. the bass yeah so um there you go we let the we let this this kind of open hat come in a bit later just to lift up the vibe a bit but that's it that's this is this is arranging this is arranged this is how you would arrange then you'd find you'd find um what some people do what some people do is, I mean, what some people do is they just copy everything. In Fruity Loops, there's a way you can do this quickly. Um, so what they do is highlight this, for instance, and I'm just gonna press Control B, Control B, Control B. So you can just do that as long as your song's gonna be. And then you can just delete things as you're going along and you can build your tune up that way. You guys must can see like how easy it is to pick up Fruit Loops. It's a, such an easy program to um, pick pick things up, and it's really good at ideas that you've got in your head, getting them onto the computer in a quick way, quick, quick, quick. And then you can do things like you know melodies, uh, sample melodies. You might have these are some melodies that I've done already. I was going to put them in a sample pack. Um, but you can you can take these out and you can manipulate these as well and literally just drag them in drag them in and they're in um, you can do you can cut things to size um, you can so you've got this thing up here stretch I could stretch this and make it play half the speed Yeah, so this is how it plays normal. So I can speed it up. Yeah, so this that could be a song, as in you could have this could be a, something like this with whatever's going around. That could be an intro. So you could just take this and just manipulate in three ways. And then when the tune's building up, it does this. And then when it drops, it does this. So you could just just have fun with it. Is there a preferred structure in grime slash drill for arrangements? Yeah. There isn't really any rules, but you ask preferred structure. I suppose there is. Um, I think with most kind of um, artist based music, there's a preferred structure and it's pretty much have an intro and then decide whether you're gonna start with the chorus first. The chorus is usually eight bars. Sometimes a hook can be 16 bars, usually eight bars. And then 
um, 16 bars of verse, or they might have the intro and then it goes straight into the verse for 16 bars. And then you'll have eight bars of chorus. And then you'd kind of repeat that again. So you could have 16 bars verse, eight bars chorus, 16 bars verse, eight bars chorus. Somewhere in there, you're going to want to make it a bit interesting and you could switch it up a bit and put middle eight. Middle eight is just some, this part of the tune that usually happens for eight bars. That's just in the middle of the tune somewhere, middle to late middle, and um, could be near the end sometimes as well. And it just takes the tune somewhere else quickly and then bring it back. So you can do that as well. Um, but yeah, in most artist-based things, that's the preferred structure, 16 bar verses. Some guys are doing 32 bar verses as well. Um, I've noticed that's been happening a lot over the last five to maybe, I don't know. The first people I heard doing that was like Eminem and Lil Wayne and all that, doing these 32 bar verses, right, right. But anyway, um, yeah, a lot of people do it now. A lot of people call on and 32 works. It works, especially if you're, you've got something to say, you know, 32 bars. Um, with instrumental based music, there's even less rules. So in, with instrumental based music, it's more about just keeping the listener interested. So whatever you need to do to keep them interested, do it. Uh, someone once said to me, every eight bars, make something happen. Whether you add something or you take something away, um, just make something change every eight bars. So that's something you could take on board. You can structure it in a similar way. Your verse just might not have an MC on it. It's just a verse type of part of the instrumental. And I call it the verse because there's another part that, that kind of uh, rises up even more. And that could be seen as a hook, even though there's no artist on it. So with, with instrumentals, it's a bit different. You can just go with whatever works, just vibe with it. I mean, do you need an intro of some sort? Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I would say on that. Um, where are we now? So yeah, I was just showing you how it works with melodies and not melodies, samples. So that's how you, you, you can mess with samples. You could do a lot more stuff because you can cut the samples anywhere. Um, as you would expect with most stores nowadays, you know, they got some element of audio manipulation and stuff. Am I going to release that pack? Do you know what? I made it, but then I wasn't going to, but you know, maybe we'll see. Maybe I'll give it out to everybody in this, in this, um, Zoom call. Yeah, so you can you can chop things up. You can have fun with this. Have fun. Yeah, loads of things you can do with that. And that's how people do sampling as well. They speed things up, they slow it down, they drag it out. Um, yeah, I've showed you that now. So we've done arrangements. We've kind of got a something that resembles a song. Let's take that out. You know, one thing I would say, um, you know, when you guys are making songs, especially when you're just starting out and you um, you want to, you give your songs to DJs. And you're gonna give your songs to DJs and they're gonna play your song in a club or in the radio and stuff. What you don't want is you play your song next to you know, Rick Ross's tune. And it's when his tune played, it was banging and loud. And then when your tune played, it just went all quiet and you lost a lot of the energy and you don't want that. So, you know, things are a lot different now, yeah? So ideally what you want to do is let a mastering engineer kind of take your song on and master it for you. And he will just balance this thing out. Any thoughts that frequency-wise thoughts that he can do, he'll sort out. And it's like a process after mixing. So you make your song, then you get your song mixed, and then you get your song mastered. Now, everyone ain't got access to a mastering engineer. And, you know, sometimes you just want to, sometimes you just want to send your tune out or you want to play it yourself. But when you play it in your car, 
when your tune comes in, it's just low compared to the other stuff that you're listening to on your phone. So what we do, you can use a limiter, what we call a limiter. And if I can find one quickly, this, these, these fab filter stuff, by the way, if you guys want to get into, um, you know, mixing your own stuff, fab filter suite is a really good suite to look into. Um, especially their comp, their EQ, their EQ, there's, um, engineers and producers that are in these massive million pound studios and they got all this kit. They got the maddest EQs in the whole world. Yeah. But they're still using fab filter EQ. I'll show you what that looks like. I've, I've opened it already, but this, this is world class. Like, and it's not mad expensive. It's about a hundred pounds, but it does a lot of stuff. Does, I could do a whole video on the stuff that this does that all the other plugins don't do for EQ. So it's, it's really good. But anyway, this here is a limiter. This is showing you how loud the tune is right now. You wouldn't, you wouldn't really put a tune into the limiter this loud, ideally. I mean, I've not been paying attention to my levels at all. And this is something I should mention. Actually. So, kind of want to make sure your tune has got a bit of headroom. If you look at this, right now it's just hitting zero. So there's just no space. C zero as the top, yeah? C zero as the top. There's no space at all. Ideally, I would want these things to be a little bit lower. So what I would do, I would typically just turn the sounds down, you know, individually, to bring it down and give the song some headroom before I send it off to a master. Um, to be fair, these stuff are done in the mixing stage for me. So, uh, gain stage and the stuff. These are all mixing stuff, not really production things. So, um, I won't go too much into that. But you can just, if you notice, I grabbed one and I used control to highlight all these and I can turn them down a bit. But, the reason why I would do this is to turn them down all together so I don't change my balances. I might have done balances between these in relation um, to each other, the instruments. And if I start messing with my balances and change the kick and push this down, it's going to move my stuff out of whack. Especially for me, when you're working with hi-hats, if you've got a few levels of hi-hats, the dynamics, you've created a dynamic with the hats. Some are louder than the others on purpose you might have an effect where hats sound like they're kind of flicking off of each other. So they need to be a certain um, volume from each other. And so to keep that and not trouble it, I often just highlight everything and adjust the volume this way. Yeah. Um, back to the limit. Huh? So I, I should have given it a bit more headroom now. So if this was my song now that I've um, that's still too no no that's not bad that's not bad that's not bad no it is bad it is bad but for the demo purposes we're gonna work with it so literally you can treat the limit as simple as grab this button and turn it up pay attention to this though and be see these beats. All these little red peaks are the song, are the limiter pushing back down the song. So it's, make, it's bringing everything up. It's bringing all these big peaks. It's making them louder, but it, it's got like a, a wall at the top and it won't let anything go past that wall. And it will push, it, will, it won't just limit it to that wall. It will push things down. Problem is, if you let it push things down too much, you're gonna to start to lose the dynamics of your song and it will make your song sound flat. So it'll be loud, but it'll be flat. And we don't want that. We don't want that. So just kind of listen to it. Listen to it as you're doing it. You'll be able to tell when it's um, when you're losing the dynamics. You don't really wanna... Um, 
again, that's not really production. That's more kind of mixing. But I thought that was important to show you guys anyway when, for when you're sending your tunes out to DJs. Uh, I'm sure Fruity Loops has got one as well, which is probably worth knowing in case you don't have um, that one. Fruity Loops does have one, actually. Fruity Loops usually starts with one on the channel straight away. does there we go so through this same thing same thing it's just a limiter the things are in slightly different places it's compressor and limiter we're not going into that um but yeah this is another way to make your another way to make your song loud um that's all it is so yeah we've kind of made a song this is a song i've showed you how to arrange i haven't really arranged it but The verse could start from here, for instance. Yeah, and you can do little trip hops and go in, go into the things. And for, for instance, you could do edits. I could copy this pattern put it on a different pattern and I could edit the pattern. So when it comes in, sometimes it's a bit different or I could just go in and take some stuff away like this. Cause you can grab the end of it and change it like that. So that's another way you can do it. But yeah, that's making tunes on Fruity Loops. Do you know what I'm going to do? Um, If I do have anything on this computer, I can open up a song and just kind of show you something I've made already. And yeah, that'll be good, thanks. I'm just conscious of time and I want to get a few questions in or whatever we need to get. Yeah, in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, if you want to. Yeah, no, there was one. Uh, how did you get them all to go down together? Um, how did I get them all to go down together? So yeah, the volumes, I think. Brian, you asked that. Okay, so. All that is, is select one, but before you select it, hold control. It's control or out. I think it's control. And then you can just drag across and it will grab everything that you've dragged. And uh, uh, NK said, what was that? Um, what was the name of the, was it the plugin? Um, what was it? Was it a gross beat? Yeah, was it the last one, was it, NK? Which one was it you were looking for? Flow then. Yo, bro, I'm just doing a Zoom call. Can I call you back? Yeah, right, nice one. See. Uh, the one after Gross Beat. The last one. The last one? Was it an... Oh, no, that was L2. That's called L2, the limiter. Okay. I think, if that's what he means. Yeah, that's a suite. Fabfield have made a suite. So you've got the limiter, they've got a compressor, they've got a reverb plugin. It's really versatile. You can do loads of different types of reverbs in it. Mm -hmm. um, so they've got a suite of things. You could just run with Fabfilter suite if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Just like you can run with Waves. They've got their own suite, which is massive. There's like 100 plugins or something in there. So there's options. There's, there are some companies that make whole suites that you can just run with their suite. Then you've also got another option with people like Slate Digital. Um, Slate Digital, or someone said you can also get a student discount for, for, on FabFilter for half price. And um, you've got um, Slate Digital, where you pay them like £10 a month, and they give you a mad amount of plugins. Um, there's another lot that do it, Plugin Alliance. So you just pay 10 a month, and they give you mad plugins, like all their plugins you can just use. And when you stop paying, it carries on to the end of the month, and then it stops, and then you just carry on when you want to carry on um so there's there's options there's definitely options um let's run this someone said look out for the fab filter cells in fact all of them around black friday um i'm opening a tune now but a lot of my um Plugins are not going to 
run because I'm I've not got my sound card plugged in. This has got no plugins in it. I didn't use plugins. I just, cause I wanted to do a sample tune. So I just sampled the forward rhythm uh, melody and I just done the drums to it. So that's what this is, simple stuff. The bass, the bass isn't doing anything to do. stuff than I had in the other tune but I'm not using all those things sometimes I just drag things out for options um so yeah if you guys have any any questions let's go for it yeah definitely yeah um yeah I guess I don't know maybe take a couple of minutes to talk about in terms of like you know building yourself up as a producer and when you kind of you know how you kind of got yourself out there um from beginning till now I guess just a few minutes to talk about that and how you kind of Got yourself out there. Well, do you know what it is? It's, it's a bit different today, isn't it? So my story is a bit irrelevant to a new producer coming up now. In fact, there's a lot more opportunities mm -hmm. uh, for the new producers. The things that took me a long time to learn um, because of the era and the time. Now, you can start producing today and you can have a song that sounds legit in two weeks, less than two weeks. You can have a song that sounds legit in a week. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the technology is different. The access to things is different. You know, you guys learning now is, I'm telling you, like, this is, it's a, it's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. You should, don't take that for granted, man. You've got mad resources. You've got YouTube, you've got all these courses flying left, right and center, especially in the lockdown. I saw loads more courses start to happen as well. Um, and now you got, we had to, back in the day, yeah, we had to kind of try and find samples ourselves. So we didn't have these, um, you know, like, uh, sample houses that you could just go online and find, you know, six samples. We had to try and I was, I remember cutting up Rough Riders tunes and stuff and chopping out the drums and Swizz's drums and cutting off Dre and Timberland Swizz and cutting off things out of their tunes to make my tunes and, you know i used to do that with sticky and walkie and all of them and um nowadays you guys don't need to do that you guys can get sick sounds straight away that sometimes these sounds are processed already so they've got compression and they've been eq'd all to sound lovely already so um but in terms of getting into the game back then what we had to do was our thing was radio. So you had pirate radios, which pirate radios now in 2021, it's all online radios. So there's, it's, it's better access now. You can um, send your stuff to the DJs and get your stuff going like that. Music speaks for itself as well. So don't worry about, you know, if, if you, you're you not known or whatever, just make bangers, like literally sharpen your sword, sharpen that sword and just keep making rhythm all the time. The more you make tunes, is the faster your musical decisions become. So it's like the more you make songs, is then the easier it is to make songs and the faster you can make songs. So um, I know speed isn't the be all and end all of making music, it's creativity, but it is what it is. But um, yeah, back then we had to send in tunes to DJs on radio um, and if DJs was in clubs because it was all radio and clubs back then um, so yeah that's how that's how we had to do it matrons get to DJ they yeah. play it. nowadays kind of similar but you've got the internet now so you can send things to DJs as well but also the DJs have got big platforms you know 
radios, online stuff, pyro, one extra, whoever. Um, but you've got your own platforms now online to be mm-hmm. hosting your own songs and just getting everyone to come look at your stuff, whether it's Instagram, whether it's beat stars, whether it's there's 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 a million platforms now to showcase your stuff. Even people that want to get into syncing and get their stuff into movies and Netflix shows and video games. There's places like Music Gateway, um, which is a, a website where you can sign up to it and you put your you upload your music and you get them. They'll pitch your stuff to um, adverts and all these things. And they send out briefings pretty much every week. And they'll say, you know, look, this these people are looking for I think one I saw recently was these people are looking for Christmas songs, but hip hop style Christmas songs. So, you know, you can go and make that. Mm-hmm. If you ain't got if you don't happen to have Christmas style hip hop songs already, you <laughs> can go and make them and just submit it. And you know, one thing I would say you really, really, really need to be okay with rejection. It's, it is part of the game. Be okay with it, you know? Yeah. Don't let it knock you back, just go again. So what? They said no, so what? One person in this whole on this whole planet said no, so what? Doesn't mean your tune's rubbish just because that person don't like it. And did they give you constructive criticism? Maybe there's something you should sort out in the rhythm. Um, yeah, just in this game, don't be afraid of that word. Mm. You know, don't be, don't be, you know, yeah. it just didn't, didn't work for them. They don't like it or whatever. Keep pitching, keep moving, keep going. Even yeah. forward rhythm. I played forward rhythm to people and they weren't into it. And, mm. um, you know, I played it to some other people and they loved it. So, you know, we're all humans. We, we, got different paradigms we're coming from different places is what yeah, it is. Yeah. and you yourself as well be okay with saying no this is something that took me a long time but you gotta be okay with saying no to people as well it frees you up to do the stuff that you actually want to do and you know don't commit to a lot of stuff that you don't really care about yeah um, this is going to take time away from the stuff that you actually want to do you know mm-hmm. so yeah Fair enough. Um, so last couple of questions, if, if any of you got any questions to kind of put through. I know Jess had a question. Uh, what's your recommendation for layering bass sounds? Recommendations for layering bass sounds? Um, to be honest, the only time I really layer bass sounds is having a synth sound and a sub. I only use layers with basses when the sound that I like as the bass isn't strong enough and it doesn't have enough oomph at the bottom end and there's there's two ways to do this you can run it through what's called a um a, a sub harmonic enhancer so a sound that has no subs whatsoever it could be this flute it could be anything you can run it through things like uad's got one called voice of god waves has got one called low air and it adds subs to a sound that doesn't have any subs it just generates subs it, it's weird but it works so that's one way you can do it and the other way is to just get a sub bass and throw the sub bass underneath it just balance them out somehow in the eq to make it match um maybe even use a compressor to glue the two together um slightly um there's ways but personally that's the only time I relate the bass sounds when um when the sound that I've got and I like is not hitting hard enough. It's not I'm not you know when you can't feel the sound in your belly, so you need to buff it up somehow. That's that's my thing. That's my approach to layering. Oh um okay guys, if there's uh no other questions, um then I think we'll wrap it up for today. But I think um yeah, is there anything else you wanna add next or anything else you wanna yeah, do you know what? I just want to say thank you to everyone that 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 came in there. You know, I appreciate that still, man. Do you know what? How many people is it? However many, we'll work it out. But if everyone here can um send your your email and your full name mm. 
in. I've spoken to Fruity Loops already, and they're gonna give you guys licenses. So you guys are gonna have this legit like program. So again, send in your full name and your email address, and we get it over to Fruity Loops, and we get looping, guys. FL gang, you get me? Yeah, if you can. Um... Uh, yeah, if you can uh, direct message me on the chat, if you can send me your full name and your email, um, then I will copy and paste those and then I'll get them over to Dex, yeah? So if you guys can start doing that now, that would be really good. If you do, if you want that Fruity Loops. Um... Yeah, so if you can send me your details in the chat. Okay, thank you. One more. Nice one. All right, nice one, guys. Uh, probably be good to have a name as well, just so I can. Um... Uh, Jesse saying, "How how how do I DM?" Uh, there should be a little drop down where it says my name, Antonio. And you just click on me. Where the chat is there? You see that? So yeah, right. please, everyone, don't forget to think. Let's get you the coffee of fruit loops, man. You yeah, know. let me make sure I've got these down now. Uh, all right. Nice one. Um, brilliant. Okay, well, let's make sure I've got these down. Yeah, if there are any last minute questions, then throw it in. Or even say it. Yeah. I yeah, mean, once, once everyone's DM their name and the, and, and oh. email address, and the, the meeting. Yeah. Okay, so I'll put everyone's email. There we go. Last one I got your address, thank you. Alright. Bet you lot weren't expecting that, innit? <laughs> Alright, is that everyone's emails and names, yeah? Yeah, it's all in it. Oh. Good. Yeah, I got yours, yes. man. Yeah, I got yours. Big up Dan, big up NK, big up Jess. Yeah. I'll take Tim all. Yeah, if, if if for whatever reason you don't hear from um, whatever whatever reason gets lost in translation, the email or whatever, you can always email Hannah, who sent you the original email, and just kind of get through to us. All right, nice one, guys. All right, so there will be more of these. Uh, we're in, obviously in discussion with Dex to, to do more of these. Um, so it may well even be in person if you're in London. Um, in uh, in East London, uh, our base uh, at the college, in community music. So just uh, yeah, keep keep your eyes out for the emails uh, because we may well invite you down for one of the in-person ones that we do with Dex because I know we've been in Pink Storm about doing those. All right, guys. But otherwise, um, thanks to Dex. Thanks, guys, for parting through. Um, hope you guys all 